Hi, I'm Patricia Allingham Carlson, and this is my video, Historic Old Carriage House, Hatboro, PA. Thanks for being here. Right down the street from where I live, there's a very nice park. Just inside the park entrance is a historic older home. And by the home is a stone structure that is currently being used as a garage, but I think it used to be a carriage house. Every day as I pass it on my walk, I see this beautiful building. I decided to paint it. I hope you like it and give it a thumbs up. Now let's paint. I started with a sketch on a fairly small piece of paper and I wanted to fill the painting with golden sunlight of autumn. And that was my thought. So what I'm doing now is filling in between the tree structure with some masking fluid so I can keep that area full of light and paint the darker areas because the light was shining through the tree and around the building in such a beautiful way. I'm dipping my pen over and over into the masking fluid. I'm applying it in little dabs and dapples, much like you would see sunlight coming through leaves. When I'm done applying the masking fluid, it will have to dry before I go ahead and paint. I have masked and let it dry, and now I'm ready to paint the background. You saw me spray with water, a fine water spray. You saw me block the water from hitting the structure and just hit the background. And now I'm applying paint into all the areas that I had also previously applied the masking fluid. I am using cobalt blue and I am using turquoise. I'm dabbing the paint on knowing that in many places it will not stick because there's masking fluid beneath. Now I'm coming in with some yellow ochre and more dabbing type of strokes. <laughs> Last I'm coming in with yellow. And some burnt sienna. You know I love the color burnt sienna and blue turquoise together. They're complementary colors and they really do enhance each other beautifully. Since the paint is being applied wet on wet, the colors are mixing quite freely right on the paper. So I'm not pre-mixing, but rather applying and letting them mix right there on the wet paper. Hooker's Green Dark just came in. In some areas, I'm going back and adding some extra dark color just to make some accent work. I next let it dry and remove the masking fluid from the entire area that's been masked. What a difference it makes! But it's given me a surface that I want to work with. And I'm going back and filling in where I removed too much paint and I want it to be a little brighter. I want that golden light to be shining through as I said before and I am adding it with yellows and with yellow ochre.
And I love how that color makes the painting light up. Now I'm coming back in with some burnt sienna and with some nice bright reds. The painted color of the wood on the building is red. A deep barn type red. So I wanted to tie that into the background and repeat the red elsewhere. And since it's fall or autumn, I can do that. My tree has a sunlit side and a shaded dark side. So I am painting the tree in to reflect that. Where the sun is hitting, I'm leaving it white at the moment. So I can find my darks and my lights and that's my reference point. And what I really like is how the dark enhances the brightness of the background. So this is basically blocking in where the tree forms are going to be. And they will take a lot more work. But doing the dark side and light side first helps me to formulate my ideas about how I want to place the structure of the tree. Every branch is not dark and light. Some branches are just all dark and there's no light hitting them at all. Now I've done some masking on the building itself as well. On the shingles of the building and on the wood as well as on the stonework. And that will be coming off after I painted those areas of course. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna and now some dark umbers are coming onto the roof. I want to make the roof look rough and textured. But all that's going to have to be revised after the masking comes off. And here's a first coat of red on the carriage house. So there is a stone wall that extends outward from the building. And the wall facing us is also stone. So how I approach the stone is to do a directional type of dabbing with different grays and browns. And after setting that up, I'm moving into the foreground, which had some beautiful lit up areas as well as shadowed areas. I've also applied some masking to the foreground area. And some heavy shading right by the stone wall, which then makes an accent color for the stone wall, which is paler, to really stand out.
where the yard goes into shade, I'm using more blue mixed into my green. And obviously where the ground is lit up, I'm bringing in the yellows. Now to tackle some more of that background and those trees back there really went all over the place. I tried to follow the lead of what was there, but I did take some liberties and change things around somewhat, just so uh, it wouldn't be quite so crazy and hard to understand. You don't have to paint exactly everything that's there. You can lose branches, you can add branches, you can put a dog in a picture, you could take a cow away. You don't have to paint everything you see. You're also allowed to change colors. You could do all that as an artist and have fun and make whatever you want. Whether it's any good or not, well, that'll be up to you. Back to the stone wall of the old carriage house and detailing the background tree at the same time. I'm sure jumping around the picture, but it keeps it more interesting that way. Now I'm removing the masking that's on the building. Start with my finger, then I come in with an eraser for a while. Also removing the masking on the foreground. And look how much of the building came off with that. Looks like I barely painted. Maybe I put too much masking on. Learn something with every painting. So I'm back to the background and it's starting to come together. You're starting to see more structures appear and more form within the chaos of all those blotty colors. And working into that shingled, textured, older roof. Establishing a strong roof line. And exactly where it is. Because it was masked off and it all got unpainted. and the shadow underneath the overhang of the roof. Now there's a tree growing in front of this building, just to the right side of it. So I'm painting the building before I paint the tree, because the tree is on top. And I'm looking very closely at the picture, the photograph that I took, just to see how everything is built and how all the joints come together and where parts meet. 
And that's my reference. So I'm doing my best and it's all about making a representation of a moment rather than painting it photographically for me. And here comes that tree that grew in front of the barn. And then I'm back to adding some very small branches in the background. Another layer of shading on the biggest foreground tree, which is also part of the center of interest in the composition. I'm not using black at any point, but rather mixing together Van Dyke Brown and Indigo, and in some cases Van Dyke Brown and Purple. They'll make a good strong dark without taking away and making the very dull color that a true black and watercolor is. They'll add a little something that you can't get from black. Getting serious with the stern work. I am mixing on the palette several different shades of grays and browns. And I dab them on, making sure I stay in a general horizontal pattern of how the rock would have been laid with mortar. I'm trying to show the planks of wood that make up the front of the carriage house. And the heavy shading that's on the side there. And now some shadows on the barn as well from the trees. I like painting shadows. I think they add a lot to a painting and I just think they're very attractive and how they pull things together in a composition. I always look very carefully at the direction in my photograph reference or the real life scene and see the slant or the direction of the shadows and try to get that correct. It does add to the realism. I'm tightening up the roof line with a dark color, tightening up the openings that were very dark, and doing some dark accenting color around the lighter tree trunk of this middle tree. And last I'm moving into the foreground, bringing back the yellows that I took away by overmasking. masking. 
and even mixing in a little bit of cadmium orange to make it look even more golden. I'm also using sap green here. A little burnt sienna just added up next to the building. And then some more hooker's green dark to make some slopes and ruts in the grass of the lawn. The green you see me painting right now is Viridian. Using the darker colors to add some accent. And then I'm doing my blocking off side by side, top and bottom, just to see what is needed and what shows up that way little splatter paint down on the bottom and bringing some of the oranges and burnt siennas into the bottom foreground to, that will tie in with the background. Blocking off so I can splatter. And I'm done. I hope you enjoyed my video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, please. And check out the links below. You can click on links to see my art page on Facebook with all my paintings and many step-by-step -step features in pho photographs. You can check out my blog link which is written about art and life. You could check out some of the products I use to create my art. And you can even look at my own products page and see where I sell some of the things that I create. Thanks a lot for coming to visit my page and my video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next video.